All right, everyone. So today we're going to be looking at integration. So pretty much calculus is two primary things, derivatives and integration. So we're going to talk about integration, which is similar to like the opposite of what a derivative is. So looking at these two graphs, which one can you find the total displacement? Also explain why you can't find the displacement for the other graph. So for this one, we can find that we can find we can find that we can find. <laughs> we can find what the total displacement is by just doing the area under the curve one half base times height. This is a velocity over time graph, and we know that the area under the curve is going to give us the displacement, right? So we can find it for that one. However, for this one, we really can't find it. And the reason we can't find it is because we have all of these curves. So we have all of these curves. And I mean, we can do our best that we can to like maybe count the boxes and everything like that, but we're going to have a hard time. So one thing, of, oh, a reason you could think of, of how we can do this is if we made like a bunch of rectangles. So if we made like a bunch of rectangles like this, and we just, what we, what we could try to do is, okay, we made all these rectangles. Uh, let's find the area of each rectangle. And if we found the area of each rectangle and added it all up, then we can find what the area of the curve is. But you're still going to have like stuff like sticking out like this or gaps like this. So there's a little bit of a problem. So this is what integration does is it allows us to uh, pretty much add up all these infinitesimal small boxes in order to find it. So if you make these boxes infinitely small, then you get a much more accurate reading of what the area under the curve is. So the smaller and smaller you can make these boxes, the more accurate you can get to find what the area under the curve is. And that's what we're pretty much doing with integration is we're adding up all of these tiny, tiny boxes and then find the area on the curve that way. So let's go through some problems or some examples. So first of all, we're going to be learning about the power rule, which is given to us by this equation right here. And if we were to look at this fu function and find the integral of that, it should uh, make sense. Or actually, I'm just going to do the examples through the next slide. Okay, so let's look at this example. An object starts at an initial position of zero meters. Okay, this kind of be important later on. Its velocity as a function of time is given as 3t squared plus 2t plus 6. What is its position at t equals 4 seconds? So what we should know is this velocity as a function of time if you were to find the area under the curve for a velocity as a function of time, that would give you the displacement. So we should know the integral of this is going to give us position as a function of time. So let's use the integral, the power rule for the integral. And then we're going to do 3t. We're going to add this by 1, so this is going to be cubed, and then divide it by what that is, so 3. Plus 2t, we're going to add this by 1, so that's going to be 2, and then divide that by 2. And then we're going to do plus 6. And well, we can see this as as is t to the power of zero. So that's the same thing as one. So we're going to add this by one, which is just going to be t. And then we could put it to the over one, but that's the same thing. I'm just going to put it over one. And then it's going to be plus the constant. What we should know is the constant. We know that the initial position is of zero meters. So this is just going to be zero. But now it says, what is the position at four seconds? So let's plug that in. x to the power of uh, four, three, four, cube over 3 plus 2, 4 squared over 2 plus 6, 4 uh, is equal to, I'm going to put that all into my calculator, 4 cubed uh, plus 16 plus 24, and we get 104 meters. All right, all right let's look at the next example. A particle starts at rest. If its acceleration as a function of time is given as uh, 12t plus 6, what is the velocity and position of the particle at t equals 3 seconds? All right, great. So what we should know is acceleration as a function of time is 12t plus 6. What we should know is the, um, the area under the curve is going to give us the change in velocity. So if we find the integral of this, this will give us the velocity as a function of time, which is going to be equal to 12t squared over 2 plus 6t. And we should find that the double uh, integral of this or the integral of velocity versus time will give us the position as a function of time. So now we're going to find the integral of this. 12t cubed times over 2 and 3 plus 
6t squared over 2. Okay? So now that we have the function of both of these, uh, we can say, sorry, I did miss the plus c and plus c, but it says that uh, it starts at rest, so that just means that this is just 0. Okay? So now let's look, plug this into the function. v at 3 seconds is equal to 12 t, which is 3 squared, squared over 2, plus 6, la, 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 3. And let's plug that in. 3 squared times 12 divided by 2 plus 18. And we get 72 meters per second. Okay, and over here, let's plug this in. Position as a function of time is equal to 12 t squared which is 3, or not squared, cubed, over 6, let's simplify that a little bit, plus, I'm going to call this 3t, which is 3 squared is equal to, so 3 cubed times 12 divided by 6 plus 81 plus 9 times 3 is 27, and we get 81 meters. Okay. All right, let's look at the next example. A particle moves along the x-axis with acceleration by uh, 6t, where a is in meters per second squared and t is in seconds. If at time t equals 0 is equal to 0, position is equal to 0, and velocity initial is equal to 0, how fast does the particle move when t is equal to 2 seconds? So we're looking for the velocity. Acceleration as a function of time is equal to 6t. Uh, find the integral of this will give us velocity as a function of time, which is going to be 6t squared over 2 plus c. But it says the initial velocity is 0, so we know that this is just going to be 0. So now if we plug this in, we plug it in at 2, whoopsie, 2 seconds here. What we get is 4 times 6, which is 24, divided by 2, which is 12 meters per second. Okay. Move on. Uh, a particle moves along with the x, so same question, a particle moves along the x-axis with an acceleration described by a is equal to 6t, where a is in meters per second squared, and t is in seconds. Uh, if at time t initial is equal to 0, position initial is 0, and velocity initial is 0, where is the particle located at when t is equal to 2 seconds? So again, but this time we're going to find a double integral. So acceleration function of time is equal to 6t. Integral of this will give us velocity as a function of time, which is 6t squared over 2 plus c, but initial velocity is 0, so this is just 0. And then position as a function of time is going to be equal to 6t cubed over 2 and 3 plus c, but we also see position initial is 0. So then now we plug this in at 2 seconds, so this is going to be 2, 4, 8. 8 times 6 is 48. 48 divided by 6 going to give us 8 meters. Okay. All right, let's look at this. An object starts from rest at time t equals 0. The velocity as a function of time is given by v is equal to 2t plus 3t squared. How far does the object travel in the first 5 seconds? Okay. So velocity as a function of time is equal to 2t plus 3t squared. We want to know how far it travels. So again, we're finding the integral of this. Find position as a function of time. So it's going to be 2t squared over 2 plus 3t cubed over 3. And let's plug this in. x, so we want to find it at 5 seconds. Is equal to 5 squared plus 5 cubed. So 125 plus 5, so it's going to be 150 meters. All right. All right, so now we're going to, I think, start to look at some more uh, challenging problems. So the acceleration of an object is moving, is represented by a function a t is equal to 9t squared plus 2. At t equals 0, the object is at position negative 2 meters and traveling with a velocity of 3 meters per second in the negative x direction. In the negative x direction, okay? How fast is the object moving at t equals 2 seconds? Okay, so this second part is pretty interesting. Uh, is pretty important. At time equals 0, the position initial is negative 2 meters, and it's moving at a velocity of negative 3 meters per second. 
How fast is it moving at t equals 2 seconds? Okay. First, we're going to find what the velocity is as a function of time by doing the, in, uh, the integral. So that's going to be 9t cubed divided by 3 plus 2t plus c. But this time, we know that the initial velocity at time t equals 0 is equal to 3 meters per second in the negative direction. So this c is going to change to be negative three. Now let's plug this all in. Velocity of the function of time, which is two, is equal to, I'm going to simplify this to be three, two cubed, plus two times two, plus negative three. Now let's see what we get. Two cubed times three, plus four, minus three, and we get 25 meters per second. Alright, let's look at this example. The acceleration of moving objects represented by the function a is equal to 9t squared plus 2. At t equals 0, the object at position initial is negative 2 meters and is traveling with a velocity of 3 meters per second in the negative x direction. What is the instantaneous acceleration at t equals 3 seconds? Alright, so this is pretty simple. Hopefully you don't overcomplicate it. So we just want to find what the acceleration is at 3 seconds. So 9, 3, squared plus 2, and we get what, 27, or oh, 81.2, so 83 meters per second squared. Yeah? All right, let's look at this next one. The acceleration of an object as a function of time is given as acceleration of planet, 3 meters per second cubed times t. If the object has a velocity of 1 meter per second at time 1 second, what is the displacement of the object between t is equal to 2 seconds and t is equal to 4 seconds? All right, this is going to be a little bit complicated. Okay, let's try to figure this out. Acceleration as a function of time is equal to 3t. Find the integral of this to find the velocity as a function of time, which is going to be equal to 3t squared over 2. What we should know is that at 1 second, so when t is equal to 1, the velocity, uh, uh, if the velocity has an object, oh shoot, let me go back a little bit. So this is t, right? And what I forgot is when I did this, I forgot to see. So what I should know is that when at one second, so I'm going to replace this with one, the velocity is equal to one meter per second. So, at the moment, this is equal to 1.5. So that means that C is equal to negative 0.5 meters per second. Or, ne yeah, negative 0.5 meters per second. Okay? So that's what we should know. So I'm going to put this back. Velocity as a function of time is equal to 3t squared over 2 plus negative 0.5. And now I want to find the position from four to, uh, from 2 to 4 seconds. So finding the integral of this, position as a function of time is equal to 3t cubed 2 times 3 plus negative 0.5 times t. And we want to know from the limits from 2 to 4 seconds. So let's plug this in for 4 seconds. So this is going to be 3 times 4. Oops, let me write this a little better. Three times 4 cubed all over. I'm going to uh, simplify that. 6 plus negative 0.5 times t, which is 4. All of that is minus from uh, the from 2, so this is going to be 3 times 2 to cubed all over 6 minus, I'm just going to plus minus 0.5 2 seconds. Okay, so what I did is I just found it at these two different limits. So I have 4 seconds and then at 2 seconds and I'm subtracting it from one another. So let me put this all into my calculator. Hopefully I'll do it without messing up. Times 3. Divided by 6. 
minus 2. So I get 30 for this one. For this one here, let's see. 2 times 3, 5 by 6, minus 1. So then I get 1 over here. So 30, oh, not 1, 3. 30 minus 3 is equal to 27 meters. And that's the answer. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was all right. Make sure to look back at some of the ones that you might have been confused with. And uh, we're going into relativity next.